Alright guys, so today I'm going to be doing cha-ching number 65 is what we are working on today. So we're going to get into where I left off in the last cha-ching, which was at a Yankee Candle Bony Bunch. Um, this one was the skeleton and I think he had an owl on each shoulder, so it was a candle holder. Um, I had won a bunch of these Bony Bunch figures at an auction. Um, they're selling. They're not selling quickly by any means, uh, but I have sold quite a few already. Uh, this one sold for $39.99, so it is, you know, Halloween themed, so that probably is helping since Halloween is on the way. The next item we have is a set of three BB cream hair primers. These were by a company called AG Hair Care. Those sold for $22.99. Next item I have is actually by Lennox. I do feel like Lennox does take a while to sell. I don't have a whole lot of Lennox um, listed, but these ones were like kind of Christmas themed. They were of Santa Claus in um, a train, so they were salt and pepper shakers. I sold those for $15.99. I do feel like I had those for a while, and I can't remember where I got them because it was like a long time ago, so they definitely did sit for a while. Um, you will be seeing a lot more of the Department 56 Halloween ornaments in these cha-chings. They are still selling pretty decently. Uh, the first one I have is a Department 56 Glitterville ornament of a skull. So this was just like a round bulb, you know, your typical bulb shaped um, ornament that looked like a skull. That sold for $22.99. Uh, the next item I have was that glass amethyst um, stone bonsai plant. This thing was so cool. I got it at a yard sale. I did pay $10 for that and it sold for $89 and that did go overseas. Um, I have another Department 56 ornament. This one was of a skeleton pumpkin that sold for $25.99. Next we have a Fabergé Tigress perfume. This also came with a matching perfumed soap. This was in like a little kind of gift set box. I got that at a yard sale. I paid just $1 for it and it sold for $59.99. The next two items went to the same person. I don't think that it was a subscriber, um, but they did purchase two of the Department 56 ornaments from me. The first one was a Department 56 pumpkin cat that sold for $25.99. And the other one was a Department 56 bat cat. <laughs> so two different kind of cat uh, Halloween ornaments. And that one also sold for $25.99. So this next item is probably the uh, cheapest thing that I had sold, which was a pair of Earl jeans. These sold for $8.99. They probably came from a fill -a bag rummage sale. Um, one of the main reasons this probably sold for so cheap is because they were a size one. Small sizes are just definitely hard to move for me, and I do think other people feel the same way. Um, just the smaller sizes are harder to sell. Um, you know, sometimes you'll get a, a sale for them, but it's not particularly sizes that I desire to pick up to resell. Uh, next we have that uranium car vase. I won this at an auction. I did pay up for it a little bit, but I still made a profit off of it. Uh, this would have been um, a vase that you would have put in your car back in the day. I don't know exactly like what years this was popular, uh, but it's really cool. It was a glass uranium vase and it came with a bracket so you could put it in your car to hold, you know, fresh flour. Uh, that sold for $99.99. Next we have a vintage can of Rave hairspray. Oh my gosh, I'm just, some things just surprise me when they sell. Uh, this came from a, I think it came from a box lot that I won 
at an auction that just had a bunch of just older products inside and I just decided to you know sell it in case you know it was purchased by like a prop department or something like that I don't think that it was purchased by a prop department it just went to a P.O. box so I'm assuming it was just you know someone who either liked the formula and wanted to purchase it or you know I, I don't know why people buy the things they do but um that's all for $39.99 so that was pretty awesome uh, next we have a mirrored glass display case I won this at an auction it was on a flat with some other stuff and whoever owned it before had little mementos inside there was like an old curse corsage there was um like fabric what looked like fabric cut from like a wedding dress or that kind of thing like it was just a lot of like nice little mementos that they decided to hang on to and I couldn't bring myself to throw those away so I sold the case with those pieces still in so leaving it up to the buyer if they wanted to do anything with those or repurpose them anyhow or you know they could decide if they wanted to throw them away but it was really nice because you could sit it down and use it just as like you know a jewelry box or something like that or there were brackets on the back so you could hang it and then it created like three little shelves so it was a really cute uh piece i really liked that um that sold for 39 dollars and 99 cents next we have a men's harley davidson plaid button down shirt that sold for $39.99 and Eric picked that up at a yard sale um, and I believe he paid $5 for it. Got another Department 56 Halloween ornament. This one was a pumpkin princess uh, that sold for $29.99. Next item was a vintage Care Bears Care Bear of Friend Bear. And then I also lauded just two other little um, vintage Care Bear items with the bear. I sometimes like to lot up things if I have similar things that may not be worth much to sell just by themselves. So I added a little vintage Care Bears book to that lot as well as um, kind of like one of those old pamphlets that would have come with a Care Bear or the playset. Um, do they still do that nowadays? It's been so long, you know, that I've purchased a toy. I don't know. Like a company puts those pamphlets in that showcases some of the other toys that they have available. Well, with this auction, it was like a, a Care Bears pamphlet that showed other Care Bears items that were for sale during that time. And that sold for $25.99. We sold a Boyd's Prince figure. This was a little Boyd's Bear figure. Um, kind of looked like Cinderella's Prince. Um, that sold for $18.99. Eric picked this up, um, I believe, at a yard sale a while back. This did take a while to sell. But um, I'm starting, <laughs> I don't know why, I am starting to pick up more Boyd's Bear related items recently. I feel like some of them do sell, um, but some do take a while to sell kind of thing. So if I'm getting it cheap enough, um, you know, I have more of a inclination to pick it up if, it, if it's not costing me much. Next we have another Harley Davidson item. This one was probably my most, um, my biggest sale for this cha-ching. And that was a Harley Davidson RC bike. So, or motorcycle. This was brand new. It was still in the packaging. Eric and I got this at a yard sale. I think we paid, I want to say, $10 or $15 for it. And that sold for $189.99. And that actually went out of the country. It was a GSP item. Um, so that was a really nice sale. For a while, um, it was listed for a little while um it had like a lot of watchers and then it finally did sell for my asking price so that's awesome next we have a longer burger basket this one was shaped like a bell and it came it came on a wire hanger and that sold for 25 dollars and 99 cents i got that at a yard sale and i think i paid 
I want to say five dollars for it but it might have been a little cheaper than that I'm not sure I don't normally pick up Longa Burger just because it's not something I know a whole lot about but it was cheap and I liked the fact that it even came with the wire hanger uh, next we have a five piece men's cologne lot uh, these were just miniature colognes um, I probably picked some of those up variously at yard sales or potentially came from um, auction box lots and those sold for $16.99. I sold a dress by a company called Maeve, if I'm pronouncing that right. It is an anthropology brand that sold for $35.99 and I got that at a yard sale and I'm pretty sure I paid about $3 for it. I sold a pair of Oshkosh children's bibs. These were a size 3T that sold for $26.99. Typically, I buy these either at yard sales. Um, I have picked them up a couple of times at thrift stores, but for the most part, I usually get them at yard sales. Next item was an Etienne Anya shirt. This was a women's button down uh, dress shirt. So it was vintage, it was definitely older. That sold for $13.99. I had that for a very long time. <laughs> um, next we have that cookie jar I won at the auction not too, too long ago. It was the all over cookies cookie jar. That sold for $69.99 and I won that at the auction for less than $10 I would say. Uh, we got a Hello Kitty pencil box. This was just a plastic pencil case. I think it was from 2010 so not really like um, old old but there's still collectors out there for Hello Kitty and Sanrio items. That sold for $18.99. Okay, we got a Lucky Brand one-piece bathing suit that sold for $19.99 and that came from a fill-a-bag rummage sale. Eric sold a Creepy Crawlers shrunken head mold. He had won um, quite a number of the those old metal Creepy Crawler uh, molds at an auction and that one alone sold for $26.99 and he had others and I think they all sold so that's awesome. Uh, next we have a vintage Bath and Body Works Happy Daisy Soap. So when I, I got this at a yard sale I paid one dollar for it and I remember when I saw it I was like wow this has to be old like I don't even remember the fragrance Happy Daisy but um yeah, apparently Bath & Body Works had a fragrance called this. Um, and the soap sold for $29.99. I sold a Paul Eshelman pottery mug. This one was pink. I had um, purchased four of these at a church yard sale last year. I think, it, no, it wouldn't have been last year because there wasn't any church sales in Count of Corona. So it would have been the year before. Um, four ones and they were all the same but different colors and I sold every single one of them um, and that one sold for $29.99 and I'm pretty sure all the rest sold for that price as well so um, I made out pretty well with those. Next item we have is a Free People tunic top. This was new with tag. I got that at a yard sale and that sold for $39.99. Um, we got another Department 56 ornament. This one was called Little Bet and it sold for $25.99. I sold a music box. This was exciting. <laughs> I don't normally pick up music boxes, but I fell in love with this one. It was a, it had mice on it and it was by San Francisco Music Box Company. I got it at a yard sale. I'm sure I paid like a dollar or less for it and it sold for $21.99. I sold a hand painted folk art style vase for $19.99 and I got that at a yard sale and paid $1 for it. $1 or less. A dollar or 75 cents. I don't remember exactly. Um, this next item was a good sale. This was a set of vintage Canon um, bed sheets and they were in the style Blue Blossom. They were brand new, old stock, still sealed. 
those sold for $69.99 and they actually went overseas as well. And those came from a yard sale and I probably paid maybe $2 a piece for them. So four altogether, I would say. Um, next we have a nativity set by a, the, the nativity set was called the Bumpkins. They were really cute, very like, um, cartoony kind of looking, but they were made out of that like bisque porcelain. Uh, those sold for $29.99 and I got those at a yard sale and I think I paid $5 for the whole set. I sold a vintage children's book called The Witch Who Was Afraid of Witches for $12.99. That came from a yard sale and I probably paid $0.50 cents or a quarter for it. I sold another Fabergé perfume. This one also was vintage and it was a miniature size. I think the scent was called Caval and that sold for $19.99. Um, next was a Lysol no touch soap dispenser. It came with a cucumber soap that sold for $28.99 and we won that at an auction. It was in a box lot full of other stuff. In fact, I think that Rave Hairspray might have been in the same um, box as that Lysol No Touch. Sold a pair of Vans canvas sneakers in a really pretty coral color for $25.99 and I got those at a yard sale and paid $1 for them. And the last thing for this cha-ching was a Blue's Clues plush hand puppet of Blue the dog that sold for $19.99. That also came from a yard sale and I also probably paid a dollar or less for that. So that is everything for this cha-ching. Um, I just have a couple of things I guess to go over with um, this here. I do, I wanted to bring up the fact I have gotten um, questions about why I price my things at like say $19.99. Like why don't I just price my things at $19 even or like $20 even? Like what's the what's the deal with doing the 99 cents thing? For me, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I've just been doing it like that since I started selling on eBay. I just like the way that it looks to me. Um it it hasn't like created any kind of um issues like I still get plenty of sales doing it that way um it's just a personal preference it's just a personal preference for myself um you know some people like doing odd numbers and things like that um I've seen people do things like five dollars and 44 cents you know or something weird like that I just I just prefer the 99 cents so it's just a preference thing um I did, I did mention, I think in my last Cha-Ching about List Perfectly, how I signed up for List Perfectly and I was seeing how that was going. Um, I, I don't have all of my things cross posted onto other platforms, but I do have a, a decent amount. I'd say maybe one or two pages worth of, um, listings that I have cross posted so far. Um, I did get one sale on Mercari since getting list perfectly. Um, none on Poshmark. I, I just, Poshmark in general, I have a hard time selling on. And, but I have gotten multiple sales on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I don't have those down here. If you guys want me to start throwing them into my cha-chings, just let me know. Um, typically, all of my cha-chings, even when I was selling stuff on like Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace, I never really put them into my cha-ching video. Um, so if you want me to start doing that, I can. Or if you just would rather this be, you know, eBay only type of thing. Um, but I did get quite a few Facebook Marketplace sales. I definitely feel like out of all the other platforms available right now, Facebook Marketplace is definitely the next best thing to eBay. 
not gonna make as much or at least me I shouldn't say that because everyone's different but for me personally it's not where I'm going to make more money it's just not like <laughs> I definitely make more on eBay and probably always will make more on eBay but it is a nice alternative to post things on other platforms to just get stuff moving on and out you know showing them to maybe a new audience that isn't seeing them on eBay because maybe they don't shop on eBay and that type of thing but um yes uh, quite a number on Facebook Marketplace, but not anything like crazy, you know, it's just stuff that I had listed on eBay, um, but sold on Facebook Marketplace kind of thing. Um, and then the, brrr, the only other thing that, it, well, for this cha-ching here, um, I think there was only one, one non-paying bidder out of all of these items. And then I did have someone who won one um, the free people. It was a free the free people tunic top. The person that won that, I remember they had messaged me, um, trying to say that the item was damaged, which I know one hundred percent at for a fact that it was not. The top was new with tag. I did get it at a yard sale, but it was new with tag. The top itself, it was a tunic top and it had a raw edge hem. So, you know, a raw edge hem is a hem that's not um, stitched. It's just raw. Like, that's the way it's made to look. And they were trying to say that it was cut or ripped because, you know, it was a raw edge hem. And I had to explain to them, like, that's how it was made. The item was new with tag and I also went and did a Google search and found the stock photos of the item from, you know, the Anthropology, or yeah, it was Anthropology, the Anthropology website showing that raw edge hem and letting them know, you know, like it's supposed to look like that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So I, out of sheer curiosity, because, you know, I trust people, I try to assume everyone is trustworthy and that kind of thing but I looked at their feedback and I looked at their feedback that they left for other sellers they had they left 10 feedbacks and out of 10 feedbacks five of them were either negatives or neutrals or negative um sounding positives kind of thing and it seemed like um, the people, like the sellers who, you know, got these bad feedbacks responded saying, you know, even though like they were unhappy, they still gave them a full refund and that type of thing. So in my mind, I was thinking this person obviously knew that they knew what a raw edge hem was because in one of their feedbacks, they were um, didn't acted like I guess they didn't know what an um an ombre like tie-dye effect was called and they said like it was stained or something um so like I I'm just you know putting two and two together that this person is just trying to get a feel for if a seller like if they complain if a seller will just refund them no questions asked just just to kind of shut them up and like get them off their back kind of thing um just so they don't have to worry about them opening uh inad or something like that so she probably got away with that based on the feedbacks quite a few times of sellers just giving her a refund and that kind of thing so getting to keep the item plus getting refunded um, so that's kind of scammy behavior alert in my mind. So after I had sent the stock photos and let her know, like, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. Um, I didn't hear anything else back and she never opened a return case or anything like that. So again, just kind of making me think that it was all just kind of getting a feel to see if she could get away with, um, just being thrown, a, a, thrown, um, a refund without having to, send the item back and stuff like that. So you gotta keep an eye out for that. There are, 
I'm not saying that she that was her whole point or anything like that or whole purpose, but it's just one of those things that you kind of got to keep keep your your head up for, you know, because there are people out there who are dishonest and who are, you know, trying to do something scammy or be scammy and that kind of thing. So, um, definitely, like, if someone has an issue like that, don't just automatically refund them. Like, you know, I mean, obviously, if it's something, like, seriously wrong and you're in the wrong or something like that, but for something like that, just don't automatically refund. If they're that unhappy with something, um, they can return the item and then get their money back and that kind of thing. That way you're not out your item and you're not out your item and your money type of thing. So I just kind of want to make mention that I don't like to, like I don't like to, um, what's the word, really put, put it out there, especially on like certain items. Like, I mean, I don't know if that was a subscriber or anything like that and that type of thing. Like I don't like to call, call people out or anything like that, but, um, it just, it kind of was a red flag for me and I just wanted to mention it um, just in case anyone else ever comes across, um, you know, a buyer, you know, kind of like that. Um, you can look at what they leave, like what kind of feedbacks people leave for sellers and stuff like that um, to get an idea if they're trying to scam other people and that type of thing. But that is everything for this ching. I apologize for that rambling there at the end. Um, but yeah, you have to let me know what you thought down in the comments. And I will see you next time.